I have in mind. By the way, excuse the glasses, but light really bothers my eyes, so I have to have some good protection here. I'm not trying to be cool or I don't take drugs. <laughs> uh, what I'd like to give you is a, a general idea today uh, how to think about the guitar another way. I think for a lot of years we've been thinking of guitar a certain way, and I think it's, it's uh, limited us. So today I'd like to show you and teach you several ways that you can liberate yourself and understand the chord changes a lot better, melodies a lot better, several several chord systems. Um, I've got everything written down on a piece of paper. I'll look at it in a minute to find out exactly every little detail. But uh, I'd like to get some of you up here and critique your playing, show you something about melody playing, how to think, how to relax. And generally, I think when you leave out of here, you should have a better idea. Uh, one of the things I want to say before I start is that uh, many of the techniques that we should discuss today uh, will probably be a little bit taxing on your hands. You, you might have to stretch. The good voicings, unfortunately, are, are the ones where you have to use you have to use your fingers in an, an awkward situation. But slowly but surely, if you don't overdo it, you can attain these kind of stretches and we begin to sound like the piano which is what all the really good fine guitar players sound like. They don't sound like they're playing guitar. They don't sound like they're doing that. <laughs> I know that sounds corny, but that's about, that's about where we're at in many, many cases. So I want to just try to get into an area which expands us towards thinking about how the piano is. Does this bother you? This monkey stuff here? Um, yeah, but we'll take we'll take one step at a time. I like to play a song. This seems to be the famous song from Boston. Every time I, I play with Berkeley guys, the first thing they want to do is play all the things you are. So it seems to be the three songs that that the Berkeley guys know: Stella by Starlight, All the Things You Are and call them grace. <laughs> no offense intended to the Berkeley guys. I told you to cut that out for me.
Now I don't want to come back. <laughs> now I'm like on the other side. Good morning. Good morning. The wake up call is here. <laughs>
when it finally dawned on me how it was done, I was absolutely amazed. So, let's start. simplest ways to learn intervals, which is part of getting all these little sounds, these little moving sounds, is to understand where they come from. And instead of just playing thirds and fourths and fifths and sixths, if you look at them contained in, in a chord, like this is a six major seven. Okay. C major seven. Now, if I take this this chord and move it up to scale, I get this. Now this should be pretty familiar to you all, if not at least this one. So all you all really have to do is just follow the scale. Each note goes to the next note in the scale. So you, you get the chords right out of the C major scale. Now what's interesting about all this is that contain in this particular scale, as I just played it, are all the intervals that I wrote on the board. Take a look at this. The first one you got is the fifths. So you instantly get your fifths. Okay. And one thing nice about this is it goes uh, horizontally as a piano goes. The piano plays this way doesn't play this way, doesn't play vertically. So all your intervals are laid out for you. Instant fifths. Otherwise, you're trying to play. And so on. Now, that's all right, too, because you should learn your guitar in a vertical fashion. But this starts to give you an idea of what's happening in the chord shapes. So the first thing you've got is your fifths moving up. And of course, we're going to use those fifths when we start playing these little lines, these little counter lines. And we know exactly where they are because they're in the scale. All right? The next shot out of the bag is that we have uh, the sevenths contained in the chord. Okay, there's the major seventh, so watch. So forth. Now. I've never probably thought that that lousy chord man could give you so much. I was amazed one time when, when I finally discovered this. I mean, it's the worst chord ever invented. I mean, is that a vanilla ice cream or what? Anyway. And after I get done, I'll demonstrate how all this works, but right now you've got your sevens already built in, okay? The next, the next interval you get is your ten. <coughs> So 
So, so far you've learned fifths, sevenths, and tenths instantly. Now, if you were to sit home all day long and try to pr play these things, <coughs> so to speak, from this point of view, they don't seem to go anywhere. Why don't they go anywhere? Because they're too self-contained. Everything is here. I mean, you're locked up. What you have to do is unlock them so you can move them. And these are all scale shapes. They come out of scales. Now, it's good, of course, to learn them horizontally. You have to learn them each way. I mean, uh, vertically. But this is going to free you up. So you've got your fives, and your sevens, and your tens. Okay, that's as far as we can go with the C in this scale. It, uh, the C in... So we take the next note now, G and B. Now that gives us thirds. Right up your scale. The problem with guitar is this. You don't see the complete picture. You see you see uh, 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 you see uh, shapes and you see you see areas. And a lot of those, so if you're very good in the second or the fifth position, God, when you get up here, it's just like being out in shark-infested waters. You don't know what to do. Oh, Jesus, where are the notes? I don't know what they are. It scares you, especially if you happen to find yourself up there. And all of a sudden, you got to shoot back to your favorite position because you, you, know, you don't know your instrument. Well, this is going to help you to know your instrument. It's very easy to understand it this way when you see it as uh, the way it was laid out naturally. It doesn't go this way. It goes this way. You see. So you've got your thirds built in. The next deal is you've got your sixth <coughs> built in. All coming from. All right. Six. Uh, and the last one is fourths. You have B and E. All built in. Now, there's several other shapes I'm going to write down for you so you can, you can see how to get the other ones. But any questions on this so far? Okay, now, because the guitar is laid out in sets of strings, and especially when you get a four-string chord like this, notice that this is the middle four. All right, C, G, B, and E, one, five, seven, ten. Now this chord, that interval construction could be someplace else, too. You see? Now we've got it up on the top strings. We've got C, G, B, E. on the top set of strings now. Also, you could learn them on the bottom set. So now you've got C, G, B, E, right here in the seventh position. And the same thing applies. This is called instantly learning your guitar. You don't, need, you don't need to spend years and years and years with things like this because they're, autom they're automatically built in. They're naturally set up for you, so you, you don't have to think. I mean, it's, man is not meant to think that deeply. Although, <laughs> we, we kid ourselves and think that we're, we're so bright and all, but the truth of the matter is when it's natural and when it's easy, it's fun. When you have to work at it too hard, you know, I don't know about the rest of you. I've been bullshitting for 40 years. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so we've got the middle four, and we've got the top four, and we've got the bottom four, which yields all those intervals. You just learn one, two, you, you learn your fifth, seventh, tenth, third, sixth, and fourth. Six intervals. So really all you have to do is learn the scale shapes. And contained in the shales, scale shapes are what I just explained. Any questions? Okay, now, there's a couple other 
important shapes that you should learn. Now let's take a look and see what they are. Oh. Everybody got this? I'm trying to economize here. I don't know if it's going to work out. I'm trying to save. This is bottom strings. It's got to shift on the bottom. Okay, so the first thing is now this shape, this shape, this shape will yield. Well, I'll write it down first. looks like this <coughs> it's real interesting now let me tell you about this shape when you first get this shape you're in trouble because it's, it's on the bottom four strings and you're not used to it and you're going to get something like it's too difficult but once you get it clean Guitar magazine when they when they decide to put me on the cover. <laughs> Simple old shitty major. With the thumb like this waving at the people. <laughs> so, <laughs> the first what you got now at the bottom here is sports. are not so, so easily, uh, are not the best fingers. It might be the best string of fingering for the chord, but you might have to change them around to suit your own particular taste and fingers. So, what you've got automatically now is uh, where we'll pretend. Now the next deal is thirds. Just learned all the thirds. The next one is sevens. Well, now we're starting you'll see that some of the shapes will overlap from time to time, and in this case, the sevens do. As... No, okay, no, now you got some new fifths. So 
that shape will give you those intervals. Now then, once again, because this is a four stringer, bottom four strings, we got to look for this on other sets. Okay, so we've got G, C, E, B, G, C, E, B. The same thing applies with this this shape. You take all those intervals that we just discussed and you you play them ascending and descending. Now there's one more up on the top. There you go in the fifth position. The other one was right up here in the ninth position. G, C, E, and B. And the next shape is right in the fifth. Now, I'm sure with a little imagination, you'll probably come up with a lot of other shapes when you spread them out. And you can find a million things, uh, possibly, I'm sure, many things that I didn't observe. And I know when Vince gets done with this, this will be another book or something. So. You know, it's, uh, his mind is already clicking. I can see his mind clicking from here. Anyway, those are two shapes. Um, some of the other shapes. Is everybody cool on that? All right. This is a slow process, everybody. We have to take our time. I mean, back and forth, you know, so be patient because it's a slow process. As they say, it's one one small increment at a time. Now, this particular shape might give you a little trouble because you have to stretch, and it's a very good shape to start with for stretching, just in case you're not used to it. It starts down here in the first position. Now, that's easy enough, but when you start to to the next chord now you've got a five stretch a five fret stretch here right so let's just talk about this stretching business which got everybody crazy say for instance you want to get your d minor and and say you're having problems don't worry about that if you can only stretch the d flat go for it but slowly but surely start to start to force your finger to get to the next one and after a while, start aiming for the E flat, and you'll get the D. Okay. And if you start to feel pain, stop. It's simple. The body tells you something. Something hurts, take it easy. Start with your D flat. Great chord. One of my favorites. Go for the D flat sharp five. The D minor, back and forth. Independence. Finger independence. See that little pinky? <coughs> Iron. Okay, then the next chord is E minor, F major, G7, A minor 7, B minor 7 flat 5, then C. And okay, what do we got? We get the thirds, we get the fifths, we get the seventh. time to time you'll see that some of these shapes overlap so that's something that you're going to run into all the time but that's good less work in a way now once again on the bottom you've got uh, this is another a killer <coughs> this particular scale will teach you how to stretch because everything is everything is stretching with this one on the bottom strings you've got one two three five five frets to stretch and it not only helps it helps these two fingers to stretch the best. Now notice how my hands are. Notice that they're not upright. They're flat. You see that? And notice that the thumb is low. As low as you can be with the thumb, the better off you are. If you try to do this thing, you're in trouble. You'll never get it. And actually, if you hold the guitar a little bit uh, on, a, on, a, on an angle, diagonal, you'll get this. It's a lot easier. You see? Now some people uh, can do this more naturally than others. Some people's bodies are, are designed different in so much that they can stretch easily. But these aren't big hands, folks. These are really actually kind of, I would say, well, they're not small, but they're just maybe in between. But they can stretch real good. 
And I'll tell you what, what the story is with the stretching business. I had a, uh, a student in the last semester since, well, maybe since September. And when I first started to teach him, I mean, this, these things just killed him, man. He couldn't do them, but now he's, he's getting them. And he's 45 years old. And the reason why I'm making that point is, don't think that you're too old. You're not really too old. It's just a matter of slowly but surely every day taking your time and stretching, and you'll get them. Joe? Yeah. May I ask you a question? Please. Go ahead. Point of learning. Do you advise the preparatory exercise of that, or to take a bit of a stretch to fingers, maybe two fingers, little fingers? Little fingers. To, uh, condition the hand before they try to get the cord. I think so. That's a great, yeah, that's a good idea. Do it. Make it easy as possible on yourself at the beginning. Don't don't do too. Don't, some of these are going to discourage you at the beginning if you try to get the whole thing. Just take your time, as as Vince says, and play uh, simple intervals to get the stretches. Yeah. Whatever it takes, by any means necessary. So you just gotta go, you have to take your time. You see, first of all, you gotta realize that this is a physical instrument. This is not like a piano where you just start to sit down and play it, or a saxophone and just blow in it and some notes come out. You know, this thing. <laughs> this is, this is, there's, there's three instruments that are the most difficult on this planet Earth. The rest are like kindergarten stuff, like we're here today. The first one is the guitar. The second one is, the, is well, there's a toss-up between the violin and the bass, but those are the three. The bass is, is the bass is a monster instrument, the upright bass. The guitar is first up. I mean, this, we're still in the infant stages of this this instrument. Classical people are about two or three hundred years ahead of us, and all you all should learn classical guitar. If you don't, go right to Mr. Breedice and start studying right now. Don't waste another minute. Don't let your life go by without knowing something about the classical guitar. If you don't, you're shortchanging yourself. I could kick my royal buns for not studying more when he was trying to tell me, well, study this, man, this is good. And I was like a zillion bopper, you know, man, I had to get out and do my thing, you know, and play my jazz, man. So now here I am, 40 years later, wishing I had, had, had worked harder. So study the classical guitar because it teaches you composition, teaches you melody, teaches you counterpoint, this beautiful, just beautiful music. I mean, when you play the music of Bach, how can you go wrong? I mean, that is it. There is nothing higher on this planet. He is Mr. He's the Jesus Christ of the music world. <laughs> I mean, it's the <laughs> That's where we're, where we're okay. The next, <coughs> the next shape is up on top. This is a chord that was invented 40 years ago and it should have never been invented. But these, these, these shapes are atrocious, man. <laughs> Lord Jesus. I mean, that's better. Now we're trying to get something. Now we're starting to sound like we. <laughs> the new era thing. But, this is where it all starts. <coughs> See, I really believe seriously that you should start with chord changes right from the beginning. I think you should, your hand should get used to, to knowing what it is to, to place it on, on several notes at a time. Simple changes, simple things at the beginning. And then progressively <coughs> getting into uh, deeper and deeper areas. Any questions so far? You paid 40 bucks and you don't have any questions? <laughs> this is what I say to the kids at GIT. You just paid seven grand and you don't have any questions? <laughs> Go ahead. You got a question? Yeah. Um, taking this principle and you're using inversions for uh, different voices for major seven chords, you do it with any chords, any nines, chord. elevens, and then other uh, scales, well, like the minor modes that talk to minor yeah, you can, This has all got to be changed into the minors, by the way. Right. Uh, I haven't talked about that. But you have a good point. You do it with any scale, which I'll demonstrate right now. Let's take, uh, let's take this interval. Like, let's, let's take, like, G, E, and F. These are my kind of changes. And say we're in the key of C. And from this point, let's pretend we have, well, look at it maybe as a G7. I look at, 
I, I think all courts are modal and comedian-like. When I see a scale, I don't see it as a scale. I, I relate it to what I'm playing at the time. If I'm thinking G7, this is G7. Now, if I go up to the next scale step, ah, still G7 to me. You see what I mean? Next. Get a little ahead of myself because I'm, I'm starting to get nervous. I'm, gonna, I'm starting to get excited and I want to do it, you see. <laughs> I have to pull myself back down to earth, you know, to explain it first. But the idea is, now we're starting to get into what the piano players. Now you go back and listen to Bill Evans. And lifetime's worth of work. Just a few skills, a few shapes here that we worked on. Think about that, how much work that's going to be. Now, all these fancy scales are fine, and I can lay a couple of them on you if you want to know some real fancy ones, but just to under understand the Western system as we know it now, to understand the melodic minor and the harmonic minor. I talk to some people and they say, gee, I don't know the harmonic minor. I don't know the melodic minor. <coughs> I say to myself, well, what are you playing? I mean, what do you think? How do you think? You know, where are you getting the sounds from? All the people that I know that sound really good, like uh, some of the guitar players that I like, I like Mick Goodrick because he's an educated man and he knows all this stuff. I like John Abercrombie. I like, uh, I like Skull. Uh, I like Stern and people like that because they know, they know a lot about this stuff. And they use it from time to time when they're not making a million bucks with their bubblegum stuff. Even Matheny, in a way, knows knows a lot about this stuff. Of course, they love bubblegum, so they have to go for the... Maybe that's my problem. I never cared for bubblegum. You know. Anyway, they can use this stuff because they know all, all the all the <coughs> harmonic tricks, which we'll discuss slowly but surely today. <coughs> Any other questions before we go on? So, I encourage you to invent new scales. And how you do it, let's, let's discuss for a minute how, how we do all this. All you really have to do is get an interval and decide the key you're in. Okay? Let's see. Let's just take this for a second. This is a, a fourth inversion. This is a, comes from the fourth structure, but I, I'm picking it because it's kind of strange sounding. And, uh, so we've got, we're going to think key of C. I've got B. I like the sound of this 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 chord, but I want to take it further. I want it. I want it. I want it to be something else. Okay, consider it to be in consider it to be in the key of C. It's so simple. All you do is go up to the next scale tones. B goes to C. C goes to D. F goes to G. So you got this. first century, my darlings. <laughs> now, old school guitar. We're playing, we're playing, uh... Miles Davis, so what? Goes on forever in D minor, goes up to E flat minor, 
14 years in E flat minor, back another 13 years in D minor. <laughs> So what are you going to play? For an hour and a half. <laughs> so now you're comping right now. happen then you're you're liberated <coughs> it's no more a thousand and one chords you play this chord and you stay there for the rest of your life these scale shapes and these little these little <coughs> notes will give you what you're looking for in life i hope now another way to comp the new the new the new era of comping no longer plays big heavy fat chords all this stuff which is great you know place for all that. Well, like when you're taking solo, guitar solos, and, and doing fast runs, weird and fast runs, as my wife calls them. You gonna play your weird and fast runs tonight? I say, yeah, well. <laughs> um, what else do I know? But the, new, the new order of comping is... listen to uh, McCoy Tyner, Herbie Hancock, go back and listen to uh, Chick Corea, and take a listen to those, <coughs> isolate the hands, listen to the left hand and see what they're doing, how many, what, they're not playing five big fat notes, they're playing small parts of it, and see what they're doing up here. That's too much. This is better. Learn, learn to grab the notes. Tradition has held us back. I mean, I love tradition. I really do. Believe me, I'm an old-fashioned type of person. You know, I really like the old, the old things, uh, so to speak. And I shouldn't call them old, but but in a way, you know, it's, it, you have to move. You got to move on to uh, to new things, new sounds, new new ways of perceiving things. And this is just the way I, I feel. Of course, you know, if it fits, then then use it. If it doesn't, well. We won't hold it against you, you know what I mean? You don't lack much here in Florida. <laughs> Maybe the sun has fried your brains or something. These are jokes, folks. <laughs> this is my Vegas act. Go ahead, man. You were applying some of those uh, sort of like transparent voices to mobile tunes. How would you apply that to, say, a standard where you have as many as Got you covered. All right. I tell you now. Listen, when you do the work with this stuff, you're gonna get these shapes. You're gonna run it. 
and stuff like that, right? Okay, two, five, one, Bach. What did Bach do? He broke up the changes. What am I doing? I'm taking this simple D minor chord, and I'm playing the 10th, and I'm playing the 3rd. I'm taking this, this ancient, antediluvian, you know what that means? Real old. <laughs> this is an antediluvian chord. <laughs> it goes back so far, no one knows where it came from. Because <laughs> here you play the 10th and the 3 again. And then you take this one and you play 10 and 3. Now, this is it. Now, should we make it a little hipper? Uh. <coughs> what did I do? I, instead of playing the third, I stretch for the B now. So I got the second half. some of the moving voices, uh, let's say, for instance, you hear me do things like this. Okay, how do I get that? Actually, it's real easy. Just take thirds. before you play the third. Resolve. Second, third, second, second, third. You can go backwards now. Third, second. Put your fingers out of the guitar for a minute. Are there any other questions? <laughs> All right, everybody, can we have attention, please? Yeah. Do you, 
has the possibility of, of much harmony on the bottom, on the top, uh, of many directions, from the bottom, from the top. But I can tell you this, that really the only way to learn it is experimentation. You have to do a lot of work with it. You have to sit down and, and find out what it's all about. I mean, when I first started, all I could do was this. And, that was, and I thought that was great. And, I, and then I began to experiment. Like, let me give you an example. Uh, if, when you learn the, this, these principles that I spoke about here, You'll, you'll notice that you have access to all the intervals, so you could use them like, I can combine things. Six. Seconds is six. combinations. What happens when you put three and seven together? What happens when you put five and seven together? What happens when you put seven and three together and seven and five? You start mixing up these intervals and start to get harmonic structures. You see? So what happens is you come up with things like this. Like I'm, I'm taking just tenths and, and seconds, resolving to thirds. I'm like an airplane. Once I'm in the air, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. You know. Do you need a break? Would you like a break? Yes? Tell me. There's uh, coffee there for anybody. Somebody about to punch my arms, but I get to them before I get to them. We'll just keep going. Okay. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just go. Let's, let's finish this train of thought now. Um, can you rewrite that, uh, <laughs> like the application of that in, in notation, where you're combining thirds and sevens, just by, by you know, putting them on the board? You want me to put on the board? Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. it just kind of uh, makes it roll. <laughs> Right. I was confused. 
most important point now. This is, this is the one, this is the salient point, as they say. What you have to do is make up combinations. Now, this is a simple combination, tenths and thirds, right? But there's other things that you can do. You can play tenths, and then seconds, resolving to thirds. Uh, you can start with the thirds, and then play the tenths. Let me give you a few examples how all this goes. I mean, I talk too much, man. Talking, man, forget about talking. It don't work. You gotta do it. Once you see it and hear it, it's in your brains. But when I talk about it, it's just my ego coming out there. Let's take combinations, the scale. The basic scale, everybody. Actually, the electric guitar is an ugly thing, you know that. You gotta play it real soft. This is where we started, about an hour or so ago, right? All right, now wait a minute. Let me let me demonstrate. Who's gonna play? You guys are me. Let me let me. Like they say, no doodling. I got my ego's too big for it. There's where we started. Then we broke it all down, right? 
Now let's make combinations. Simple combination, a ten and a third within the scale. <coughs> could yield such beauty, but it does. Let's take the thirds and the tenths. They just kind of more around. Nothing really gets done. The truth of the matter is we're happiest when we're working because we're in what they call a flow. Our brain kind of gets to that other level, and sometimes you forget about it, and there's two, three hours gone by. So the point that I'm trying to make here, ladies and gentlemen, is I hate to say this because I wish there was an easier way, but it's commitment and hard work. Commitment and hard work. As well as I play, I wish I had made a deeper commitment. I wish I had worked harder. But I was like one of these guys, you know, I wanted to go out and, you know, you know what you do when you're a young man. You just want, I mean, why couldn't I just practice like every day and just think of this music and, but it wasn't that way. So I had to go out and get here. But I wish I had made a deeper commitment. Make your commitment. Re I mean, reaffirm what it is to yourself. Where do you want to go? Get your goal, because if you get your goal, you get to it quicker. If you don't know where you want to go, you can't get there. So you got to look and see what you want to do. What do you want to do? All I wanted to do was play jazz. That's why I didn't study more classical guitar. I wish I did. But if, you, if your goal is clear in your head, you get there quicker. Even, even in a day, even when you're sitting down to practice, today I'm going to get this thirds and sixths and stuff. When you're done, you got it because you made a commitment to it. And you went, this is your goal, and you got to it that day. So you got to work every day at these things, trying to find out where you want to go. And believe me, it's slow. It's not fast. There are no geniuses out here, man. No geniuses. Box set, ten hands, ten fingers, whatever we have. Man, this is it. There's no, there's no, I don't believe in, I don't even believe in talent. I swear I don't even believe in talent. I've had students, man, 
that I should have thrown away the first day they came to me. Two, three years <laughs> later, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Somehow, so no one's got really, really the perception to see what's down deep in anybody. So I just let people go. As long as you want to do it, keep going at it. That's all I do. Keep going. Keep working. Why am I getting so emotional about it? Fifth Street Dice ruined my life. It's on camera. I'm not camera. I haven't had a happy day in 40 years because of that. I feel guilty if I don't play or practice. See? Started all that, Vince. I don't know. If you kiss the Pope's ring one of these days, they'll, they'll bless you and forgive you. But you know, you got to go to the Vatican for that.
uh, it's just ma making, uh, doing the things that we, we studied today and, and, hope, and hoping and praying that I get the right modulation at the right time. <laughs> Being able to resolve it. Getting yourself out of it. Joe Pass told me a beautiful thing one time. I, I said to him, actually, I got one of my greatest lessons from Joe Pass. No offense to Ted Vince, but this is true what he said to me. <laughs> I called him up on the phone one day and I said, Joe, I said, man, how do you how do you play solo guitar? What do you do? I said, you must have those 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 chord changes worked out, man. I mean, you know, they're always right on and whatnot. And he says, man, are you kidding? He said, I play them off the top of my head. The greatest lesson I ever got was on the telephone from Joe Pass. I said, off the top of your head. It changed my life right then and there. Then I realized that if I'm playing Stella by Starlight, and I forget the second chord, oh, I'm screwed. You understand? So, but if I'm playing them off the top of my head, I go is okay, as long as I'm playing them off the top of my head. But if I'm trying to play a memorized solo, and I forget one chord, everything topples. It's like taking that one little piece of straw, everything is on the floor. I don't play anything anymore that I, that I study. Everything comes off the top of my head, everything just about. With all the information behind me. I don't want to be bothered with a memorized thing. People say, Joe, come on, let's rehearse, let's play. No, I don't want to. I want to come, I want to plug in one, two, one, two, three, four, bing, because that's where it's at, right then and now. Now, it's called, they call that Zen, and I'm not a Zen, believe me, I'm just, I'm whatever I am. Just plug it in and do it. That's the idea, let it go, because the creative thing, you can't, you can't, you can't formulate it. Not really, not when you're really doing it. When you're really doing it, you're just doing it, you don't even know you did it. You can't be creating when you're creating, because if you knew you were creating, you wouldn't be creating. A little rap thing there. <laughs> you don't know you're creating when you're creating because if you knew you were creating, you wouldn't be creating. If you put a little rhythm to that, man, I bet you we got it hit. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like after 40 years. Of, of work and that you can do that. That's a catch. Yeah, there's a little catch to it, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, questions. A couple of questions. Let's have a little question time right now. Don't be bashful. I'm gonna have some coffee. By the time I come up, I want a question. Do <laughs> <laughs> they ask a question? Where? Go ahead, take it one. Um, all right, one question is, uh, this. What you were doing before was all intervals and two note chords. Just now? And that, yeah, that helped me out amazingly. Um, uh, the problem that I have is that I use the same chords that I've been using for like four years, and I'm really getting tired of them. Blessing my life, huh? <laughs> well, I don't know how much time we got. How much time we got, Vince? 20 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes. Maybe I could, maybe I could do the, I could tell you, I could tell you how to be, well, we can later on. I can start now. <laughs> I, can, I can start now and maybe finish it up for you. Uh, this question has been asked me. This is the most asked question in all the seminars that I ever do. I, I don't my chords. I don't like my chords. And it seems like everybody just don't know how to get the new chords. Well, today, my child, I'm going to bless you. <laughs> When you leave out of here, you will be enlightened. Like you kind of got that look about you anyway, a little halo over to help. All you need is a little halo on top of you. Cool. You see what I'm saying? I'm sorry, man. You know, maybe I should have really just been an entertainer instead of a player. Okay, everybody. Let us take the same. Why don't, for those of you who've got your guitars, come on, let's do it together. Put your hand on the guitar. Grab this dumb chord, C major 7. What we're going to do is we're going to figure out the better voicings, how to get better voicings. Get your axes out. Let's work. Okay, what?
what I'm about to show you, everybody, let me have your attention. Yeah. <laughs> what we're about to go into will, uh, will, will do several things for you. It will help finger independence, and it will help your stretching, and it will give you brand new knowledge and new course. And it's real easy. The whole principle, principle behind it is anytime you've got a cord and you move a finger, you've got a new cord. That's brilliant, isn't it? Okay, so here's how it works. Let's take C major 7, right? Once again, this is our starting point. <laughs> now, we're going to take the top string, in this case, which is B. Let me do it first, and then you can try it. Watch. You take C. You raise the C to F. Brand new chord. Now, you can think of this as several things. This is this does, this does, this is more than a C at this point. Could be a G7 sus, could be an F, uh, F major 7 flat 5. But the point is, it's a new chord. The next thing is, raise the F to F sharp. Uh-oh. Oh, we're starting to get someplace now. All right. Now, while we got our hands on that, so we're going to relate everything. Everything we learned is a stepping stone. Remember all this stuff? Breaking up the intervals? Now, check this out. We have some new intervals to work with. Now I'm working with the major seven and the flat five. You want finger independence? Try that. Did Ray Maddie make that guitar man? Who? Ray Maddie. Okay, everybody. So now, for instance, right now we have a very interesting chord. We have a C major 7 with the flat 5. Now, we can also add the B on top of that. So already you've added three new chords to your vocabulary. Now, for these, any of these chords to be effective, you do not have to play all the notes. Like if I want to just take this, if I want to eliminate the C, for instance, you just play that. I'm three still playing. okay. Pardon me, what three notes you play? The G, the B, and the F. <laughs> all right, let's continue on. Go back to C major. Now we're going to lower the E to E flat. Now you have major minor. Lower the E flat to D. Major 7 with the 9. Or major 9 with the major 7. Now hold it. This chord is Oh, listen. This is the Friday the 13th chord. In case you ever have to do any movie scoring, you need a chord? Perfect. C major 7 flat 5 or some kind of an F sharp sus with the C in the bass, some kind of a B7. Could be a lot of things. The idea is that it's an ugly sound. And so I don't list out of wanting. Okay. Now you're going to find some of those. But let's go one more. Now wait. Now we got magic here. Wait a minute. How many times have you needed? A, how many times have you needed a note, a major chord with the note C on top? Okay. Now, don't. Stop playing for a minute and just listen to me because now we're gonna we're gonna dive into some pluralities. This is an exotic chord, so whenever I get an exotic chord, I want to expand it. First thing I want to do is find out where the flat five is. So we lower the G, the G flat.
because the minute you start altering chords, those alterations mean something else. Here's your C major 7. When you have a C major 7 flat 5, it's related to a family. And that family is D9, F sharp minor 7, flat 5, A minor 6, C6 flat 5, or F major 7 flat 5. Now check everything out for a minute. Watch this. Here's C major. Here's the F sharp. Now that F sharp is also an F sharp minor 11 flat 5. If you put the F sharp in the bass, try different bass notes now. Put the F sharp in the bass. Now try putting the A in the bass. Now what do you got? You got some kind of an A minor chord. A minor 13, A minor 6. Now put your D in the bass. The great D13. Add the F on top. D minor 13, sharp uh, 9. D, D, D13, sharp 9, sharp 9. One of the ways to get around the pain, everybody, is to use lighter strings. Use some rock and roll strings for a while till your hands get used to all this stuff. Nines down to forties or something. Don't make it hard on yourself. Life's too rough. You know, real easy strings so that your fingers can, can press down. And get the action lower. Take it to a good luthier and have them cut the nut down or lower the bridge so that everything feels real watery. You understand? Loose. If you try to play the old style with heavy strings, you'll never do it. You're going to get tendonitis. Trust me. What about 11s? Whatever. Whatever it is. No, no, no. So how does it feel to you? It feels better than 12. Yeah, 12. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, everybody. That was brilliant, man. <laughs> So, my point is that whenever I get an exotic chord, I gotta have something else here. I found a flat five, I relate it back to, to the family, got a D, got an F sharp, got an A, and got a C. Now, I might have to stop here if you don't understand all this. Why? D ninth is a plurality with the F sharp minor 7 flat 5, a simple D9, like this, or an A minor 6, or some kind of a C chord with the flat 5. That's the one everybody misses, and that's the one that's really important. So, the thing about it is, I hope that we can get through all this this afternoon, is that one of the problems with music is too many people isolate things instead of seeing things as, as families. I see things as families. When I see dominance, there's only three families. G, B flat, E flat, and E is one, fa one family. It, uh, a flat, B, D, and F is another family. And so on. So, but I'm going to write all that down later. If you think about it, right now we're dealing with this family. You've got to remember that there's a family involved here. How do I remember this, everybody? You say, fine, Joe, you give us all this stuff, but how do I remember it? I want to tell you about what they call a mnemonic device. That means like tying a piece of string around your fingers so that you can remember what it is. Check this out. D, F sharp, A, C. What does it spell? D7. What? D7, right? Okay. Now, all you have to do is remember the order. The nines first, the minus seven flat five, the minus six, and the, and the major chord. Let's have a little quiz. C ninth, what are the plural pluralities? Let's take them one at a time. First one is C9. What's the next one? Next one? And B flat. Instant plurality. I believe in instant. I believe, I don't like instant food, but I believe in instant instant things too. G9. G9 first, what second? B minus 7. Then? Which one? B minus 7. Then? 
So that's how you remember it. That's one way to remember it anyway. Okay, so let's go back where we started now. We we have the C major chord here. We're gonna take the next string, the B string. First thing we do is we raise B to C. And we get the greatest chord ever invented. Yeah, you know how many people know this chord, man? C, raise the C to D flat. We're getting to Spain now. We're yeah. traveling, we're traveling to different countries. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think of this chord as like a C. A C it doesn't have the, the, the flat seven, but I use it as a C seven flat nine. Okay, now raise. <laughs> C sharp to D. So you add a nine. Was it a joke? Was it a nine? Was it a nine? Add the flat five. about this demonic device, right? Now we have an altered dominant chord. Is it possible that within this altered dominant chord we can find some of those other uh, possibilities? Let's take a look and see if we can. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
see. This comes in real handy. Okay, just follow me for a minute. Here, here I have the C7, right? Major flat 5, major 13. So now I have a C13 with the sharp 11. What happens if I put the E in the bass? <coughs> now I have an E minor 7. I, leave, I, take, I, I take off the C and just play E, B flat, and F sharp. Or I can even add the G. Or the A. And now I have some kind of an E minor 11 flat 5. What happens if I put the G in the bass? Now I have like a G minor 9 with the sharp 7. Some kind of major with sharp 7. What happens if I put the B flat in the bass? I have a major chord with a sharp 5. Starting to find those chords you're looking for now? <laughs> now, my next question. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, I'm not done with okay. okay. Oh, so you, I got to one question at a time. <laughs> you see what happens when you start finding one thing? Every time you move a finger, you find something new. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> that concept as passing tones when you're playing? Oh, all the time. That's the, you know, I think there would be a great passing tones with all this, all this, you know, watch. Example. It's all really the same thing we're just talking about. Okay, so, now you've got the 13 sharp 11, you got the E minor 9 flat 5, or 11 flat 5. You have the G minor with the sharp 7. Then you have the B flat major with the sharp 5. Now then, what's so interesting about this, we know that every time we have a dominant chord, and especially an altered dominant chord, that we have a flat five substitution. So wait a minute, this is more than C now. It's gotta be some kind of an F sharp. Flat five on the, on the bottom, sharp nine up here on top, three, and root. Rabbi Shankar. But that, that's not the complete family yet. There's more to the family. <coughs> the principle says that C7, F sharp 7, A7, and E flat 7 is, are related. So if that's the case, then this is not only a C chord or an F sharp chord, it's got to be some kind of an A chord. Uh, is it or isn't it? Let's take a look. A, sharp 9, root, flat 9, 13. So now you've got some kind of an A chord. Is it some kind of an E flat chord? C is the 13. Uh, A is your flat five. B flat is your five. Split five. G flat is your sharp nine. Now, I told you a minute ago there's families. Let me just write, write them down so you can...
you have a dominant chord, you have you have uh, you have four chords related to it by the minor third cycle, C to E flat to F sharp to A. They're all interrelated. <coughs> this is all interrelationships here. So really, when you see a dominant chord, you don't only see one chord. You should see four chords, and you should see the family relationship to it. So when you see C, you automatically see the E flat, the F sharp, and A. Now, in, in harmonic, to get the real harmonic value out of all this, when you start to see this clearly, you start to, uh, th these things begin to, to interchange, like this also an A chord, and I might use that as an A chord. Now, te technically speaking, you would say, well, Joe, it doesn't look like A, but the, when, you, when you use this sound as A, you begin to get real lush harmony happening here. The next one is a D flat. The next one is D. Uh, you only have three families, so your most important shot is to remember the families when you see dominance. Now, let, let, let's see why all this is related. <coughs> Sorry. Let's take the C7 for a minute. Now what we're going to do is C. Why is E flat related to it? Let's take a look. We spell E flat G, B flat, D flat. <coughs> That's a sharp nine for one thing. Exactly. The E flat will give us the sharp nine. The G is the five. The B flat is the flat seven and the D-flat is the flat 9. So E-flat 7, E-flat 7 chord gives us the sharp 9 and the flat 9 of C. F-sharp, how is that related to C? F-sharp is the flat 5, B-flat, flat 7, B-flat is your flat 7, D-flat is your flat 9, and E is your 3. So you get the flat 5, flat 9. How is A, A7 related to it? A is your 13 of C, D flat is your flat 9, E is your 3, and G is uh, your 5. So you automatically see that everything is in relationship to one another. You can do exactly the same thing with the other chords. You can take E flat and see how they're related, and F sharp and A. This is an important trick, everybody. This will give you a lot of mileage when it comes to harmony. Now, just mentally make the questions in your mind and write them down, because I'll get to them after lunch. I want to get through this chord system. So, once again, we're at the C7. Now, we lowered the B flat to A. Now, we have C6. We lowered the A to A flat. Now, we have C major with the sharp 5. Let's take the next string. Now we're going to raise the G to G sharp. C major sharp 5. Go one more. C major 13. Or 6. Now get back to where you started. Lower the C to G flat. C major 7 flat 5. Lower the F sharp to F. Flat five. Lower the F to E. Now lower the E, E flat. Friday the 13th again. And lower the E flat to D. Okay, get back to where you started. Raise the C to C sharp. Now we don't have a C anymore. We have C sharp minus seven flat five. C chord, some kind of E minor. One more. E minor with the major seven. E minor. Get back to where you started. Lower. Lower. Okay. Once again, let me say this. Not all the chords are going to sound good, but let's face it, if you get 20 chords out of 25 chords, I know you came out a winner, 
You see what I'm saying? Now, once again, everybody, because this is a four stringer, everything that we did here, you take it up higher. As I told you earlier, the first thing that happens is you begin to get finger independence, you get your stretching happening, and you get your ear happening, and you start to find uh, better harmonic chords. Now, you could do this on any chord. Any given chord that you put your finger, finger on, Start moving fingers, you've got to come up with something new. Any questions? Shall we continue this after uh, lunch? A bon appetit, as they say in Italy. Joe, wait. wait. Do you want to give me a... Uh... Hold it, hold it, hold it. You want to get that straight to you, because we don't want you missing it. You want to give them an idea what we're going to do this afternoon, or would you rather do that as a surprise? No, let's, let's leave it a surprise. Uh, we want a surprise. I want to say one thing. Uh, you know, don't, don't stay here. I'll give you responsible for your acts or whatever. But you're welcome to stay here. Please, there's no smoking, that's all. What time should we be back? Two. I'd like to speak about. I was asked actually to speak a little bit more about about the things we spoke about this morning, and I will briefly. Uh, nice lady asked me to talk about some blues forms and some uh, how do you play uh, for longer periods of time over like a simple chord like G major or, or C major. Uh, I'd like to get some people up here so I can critique. If possible, I'd like to show. Uh, come in, catch the video. Uh, I would like to. <laughs> Come in, get the video. Fashion the ball. Fashion the ball against the wall. Go out. No, go out there. And I'll try to give you an, uh, an idea what to do when you're playing a melody and how to how to bring the most out of the melody, how to fill in around the melody. Uh, but one of the things I want to speak uh, about right now is just a little bit more uh, continuance of what we talked about this morning because now we can, since we discussed all that, now we can see how to get it, get deeper into it. So the first thing I want you to understand is this. Say, for instance, you have this. Now, this is uh, the most popular progression in music, and it's a 2-5-1. Now the problem with the 2-5-1 is that, uh, or say for instance, you know, we had a bar, D minor G7, and bar could be something like that. Uh, sometimes the two, is okay, but it gets it gets very boring to me. The two five two five two one five. So what I do a lot of times is I just play five right on through there. Now the reason why this five is so important because you can get a lot of alteration, a lot of real magic going on the five chord, and you have a little bit more time to do it if you eliminate the two. So what I do, what I want to do now is show you. Uh, give you some ideas how to use some of these these exotic alterations for the five chord going to the one chord as opposed to playing the two the five and the one and um, we'll see what happens <laughs> Going to five, going to one. All right. 
So what I do quite often, I use the five going to one and just eliminate the two. Now the reason why I do that is because I can get a lot of mileage when I start moving the five chord in minor third cycles, like. get one simple pattern. Say for instance for the G7. Let's take one. This is that interval stuck together. The chord is G13 flat 9. A flat on the bottom, B above that, E natural, and G. A simple chord like that. A flat Now, as I told you earlier, there's a family here. You got G, B flat, go up a minor third, go up another minor third, then you play D flat, go up another minor third, E, and if you go up another minor third, you're right back where you started. Now, what's interesting about this, instead of playing, which is fine, take the notes within the chord intervalically again. That's major seven happening. Take the two outer notes, the A flat and the G, and take the two inner notes, the B and the C. And go up, just go up by minor thirds. There's your five. Or you don't have to go all, you don't have to complete the cycle to make it work, watch. You're pulling notes, intervals, out of these chords. Now, what, is the, what would a piano player do? A piano player doesn't sit down and play. He doesn't do that. I mean, he might play something on the bottom, like, he might hold something like that and then work with, it, with this hand. of the chord or fragments of the chord. There's nothing, there's no big revelation here. Now, let's see what happens when we use, uh, let's say for instance, uh, the end of Stella by Starlight. Minor seven, flat five, A seven, D minor seven, flat five, G seven, C minor seven, flat five, F seven. Okay, forget about the twos for a minute and just play fives. A seven. What did I do? A seven. sharp nine here in this case G C sharp F sharp C so I'm combining the flat 13 flat nine
you're looking at me like I come from another planet. And I'm looking at like, I'm looking like you come from another planet. <laughs> Let's review. Let's back up a minute, because I know it gets heavy, you all. But, I mean, if you wanted uh, somebody else, you could have got them, you know what I mean? This is, this is my attitude towards it. <laughs> okay, once you got E minor, A7. Eliminate the E minor, just think of A7. So now I'm using the 13 flat 9 to the sharp 9. That's the pattern. Once you get that, go up a minor third, because if you go up a minor third, you're going to play the same thing through C, and C is related to A. I got to stop here, by the way, everybody. The very first thing you should do is you go, should go see Vince and take theory lessons. If you don't know this theory, then you've got to have this theory, because you can't progress unless you know this theory. Now, go see him because he knows it backwards. He's the one who taught it to me, you understand? If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have an act. So, I mean, I don't want to embarrass him, but this is the way it goes. Go and study so you can know what, what you'll, when you see these tapes later, you say, oh, that's what he was talking about. Yeah. Okay, you've got to know it, otherwise it's like talking two languages. Like when I'm in Italy, I can't speak the language, so I can't enjoy it, you understand? Imagine what happens if I can say pasta bazool and meatballs, man, and spaghetti and lasagna. I mean, I could just eat like a champ. So. So, take the first pattern, check out what you got. Man, you got a fight there. for guitar magazines, you know what I mean? <laughs>
about altered chords, the better... See, okay, this is a good thing. I, this one, yeah. People keep asking me over and over again, Joe, what about the substitutions? What about the substitutions? Forget the substitutions. It's not the substitutions. It's the voicings that count. No, you could play B-flat major 7 like this. Really in tune, too. Wow. So it's not your substitutions. You've got to learn better voicings. Work on the technique that we spoke about this morning. Every time you get a dominant chord, move that dominant chord by minor thirds with the fragments. Take the fragments out of it. Another way to do it is like Stella. buys the same sock and the same glove because it fits everything. Whenever you have a lick, say for instance we're talking D minor now. This is, we'll do it with chords, but I'm going to do it with notes first. I have a simple lick. If I move that lick up a minor third, that outlines my dominant chord. Why? Spell F minor 7. F is your flat, is your flat seven. A flat is your flat nine. C is your eleven. E flat is your sharp five. So you're getting an A seven flat nine sharp five. Like now, if I go up a major third, I outline my one chord. So you realize the possibilities that are just limitless. Like I could do chords. for minor. If you do like
Okay. If you take a B minor 7 flat 5, move it up to D minor 7 flat 5, and then go up to F sharp minor 7 flat 5. What you got is B minor 7 flat 5. Now, if you spell D minor 7 flat 5, D, F, A flat, and C, what do you got? For E7, you see, for... Sorry, let me make this a little clearer. It's like, shit. This is outlining E7. This one is outlining A minor 6. So there's your 2, 5. This one is outlining D minor, G7, C major. So, what's interesting about this is, if you take a look at the D minor 7 flat 5, the D in relationship to E7, there's your 7, okay? Your F is your flat 9, your A flat is your 3, and your C is your flat 13, okay. So now you got your E. No. So now you got B minor seven flat five, D minor six, A minor six. Uh, yeah, B minor seven flat five, D minor seven flat five, outlining E seven, and F sharp minor seven flat five, outlining A minor. So you got a minor two five. <coughs> All you need is one lick. You understand? Now, same thing applies to the harmony, my loved ones. Check this out. B minor 7 flat 5. Simple one. Go up to minor 3rd. E7. A minor. Same chord. One chord fits all. More, more, more melodic, more, more exotic. Or, <laughs> or, let's see. I was working on one the other day. It's killer, man. Now this one is a little heavy to take. It's good. side in the afternoon. I don't know my own name in the afternoon. So, I might say A minor and be talking about B flat 7, so you got to bear with me, you know, because it's total right brain from here on in. i got to force myself to come back to reality. I went to see a shrink one time, and I says, I don't like reality. He says, you've got to like reality. This is the way it is out there. I says, man, I, I hate it. I can't stand it. You know, man, you, you've got to learn to accept it. I say, yeah, but when I play one of these, who wants to accept that? You know, nobody. This is it. All right, you understand this principle now. Upper minor third, upper major third gives you the instant two, five, one. One sock fits all. Play with it a 
little bit. Have some fun with it. And don't forget, any exotic chord you get, the same principle applies. So you take the same shapes, watch, D minor. Well, let's do it. Let's do the flat five. Here's the simple lick. Major minor. Synthesizer on it, man, it'll sound like we like a full orchestra. <laughs> it's terrible. If you can get the right sound, the right touch, you know, it doesn't have to sound like it's electronic.
Okay. We're cool. Yeah. I want to answer a lady's question back there. She asked me a, a question about blues. There's no art, there's no one progression that is so deep as the blues. You understand? First of all, the reason why it's so deep is because you have to have a certain feeling to play it. It has to, it has to go beyond the notes. Why? Because the form is so simple. If you can't get real emotion and deepness into it, then you're not really playing the blues. Then on the other hand, it's very exotic because, you know, this is also blues.
get this, get this kind of, get this thing happening, like what's up? Just listen for a second. Mm -hmm. Notice that the rhythm is always happening. I never stop the rhythm with the right hand. So you keep your rhythm going. Uh. Uh. Somebody's just taking off on top of all of this, you see. Melody 
on it would be really nice. But say, for instance, I was going to take a solo, what would I do? Start singing things to yourself. Well, it's hard for me to sing them and, and imitate them at the same time. But what I'm doing is I'm creating the rhythms in my head first. So when I get ready to play, I'm thinking... Because if I just play the melody, so much on where the time is, I don't want to be part of it. I just played with a guy from New York who was a great drummer, but I didn't enjoy myself because every minute I have to count. Is he coming in on one? Is he coming in on four? Am I on one? Am I on four? I mean, I got nuts thinking about where the hell the time was. I'm a four to the beat, no cheating, man. <laughs> the 
as long as I know where to be is I'm okay. <laughs> if it gets too complicated, that's why I've eliminated it. Uh, but I'll give you a good advice on that. The thing you have to do is you have to concentrate. When I was having problems playing with these slick rhythm sections, I went to my good friend and mentor and guru, Ira Sullivan, and I asked him. I said, Ira, what, what do you do, man, when the guys are playing this and they're playing that? You know, he says, Joe, he says, you've got to concentrate. Simple, always simplicity comes from masters, not long dissertations. He says, you've got to concentrate. He said, because they got four things going, two hands and two legs, so they can play four rhythms. You understand that? Now, you have to concentrate. If a guy got this going over here and this going over here, and all this, you know, it's like, well, you know, all that's happening. <laughs> You're trying to find, well, where's the one? It's going to be quite, oh, there it is. Oh. <laughs> You'll never find it. So you got to anchor yourself. What I do a lot of times is I have I have a system where I, 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 I kind of, one, two, three. This is always going to, like, this is always going to be the downbeat. One, two, this is always going to be three, four. One, two, three. So, as long as you're wanting, uh, so you know where that beats all the time. Why? You see, music is body. If you don't use your body in music, man, you're missing half of the battle. You got to get that body cooking. You see what I'm saying? Imagine somebody playing, cooking, just like, just standing there like that, man. Don't even look right. <laughs> so you get that body. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine a rock and roll guy just kind of just standing there and doing a shit like that? I mean, what is that? You gotta have an act. This music business, you gotta have an act. So keep your body as keep it keep the or a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, whatever division you want. But you get to get to know where it is. You see what I mean? So when these guys get I mean you know just where it is. One, I got you. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> and don't, I'm going to tell you something. We laugh, but it's the truth. Because nowadays, everything's polyrhythms. It's all in four, but it's all polyrhythms. It's all subdivided. And I got my funds kicked real good several times because I didn't know where I was and I came in wrong. And there's nothing worse when you come in wrong and then the drummer gives you the downbeat. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you just want to turn around and walk away. <laughs> So you have to devise methods by which you can count. That's my method. Any other questions? Go ahead. Don't be bashful. Just another part of that question. Like you were you were talking about like you prefer now to just play by yourself. One of the, the problems that I find sometimes is I, I get like a real nice sound by myself and everything. And then I get with other players, and it kind of like it's almost like it ruins the sound because of the the sound of the cymbals. I couldn't agree with you more. I totally agree with you because the fact of the matter is that those instruments uh, they jump on top of you, man, and they just destroy what you're doing. Like if you you know, I mean, this cannot this cannot t this stands alone. You don't anybody around you, man. This is plenty. You see what I mean? Those kind of chords are delicate, man. They belong by themselves, at the most with a bass player. You, could, you know, I had to come to a decision. I had to say to myself, look, Joe, what are you going to do? Either you're going to go in this, I, you know, now I hate the jam. I absolutely hate the jam. You know, you know what I mean? Before I used to live it when I was a kid, but I don't like it anymore. Now, whenever I get in a situation where I got to do that kind of jam and stuff, I come home depressed. My wife says, well, how was the gig? I said, it's horrible. Why not? Oh, man, you know, it's too loud. It was too this. It was too that. I hate it. But what do you want to do? Play by myself. Mostly. Because I can do anything I want. I can stop. I can start. I can play whatever chord I want. I don't have to worry about anybody playing the tonic. I'm past all of that. I just want to play. Whatever is in my head or whatever I can get out without anybody in my way. It took me about 40 years to get there. I want to do what Keith Jarrett does. I want to go on the stage, start the first note, play an hour and a half, and get 15,000 bucks. <laughs> so, so far, I'm about $1,400 and $500 away from the gold. <laughs> no, not 
not quite. I'm getting there slowly but surely. I have to work harder. I have to do more work. Still not quite there yet. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, this is pertaining to the, to the chords that we were doing before, uh, the chord forms and getting the chords. What's a good way to memorize all these chords? Because I've fooled around before and I forget every one of them. Okay, I'm going to tell you the simplest way. Uh, in the last 30 years, psychologically, there's been a move away from the system of rote learning. You know what I mean by that. Oh, no, don't teach the student rote memory. There are other ways for him to digest these things. He can visualize everything, and then he can just go to it, and he'll have it in his memory, and it's all bullshit. That's where it amounts to. Because what you got to do is you got to sit down every day, and you got to hack it away. That's the only way you're going to learn it. Not... I would say the other things are very good aids, like visualization and all that. But when you try to learn, but when you work by rote, you so you come away really with something on your hands because you've done it. You understand? It's as simple as that. It's it's. There's no shortcuts, my son. I wish there were, because if there were, I would have found them. Believe me, I would have found them. Because I tried everything, and there are none. And there shouldn't be, because you should learn to enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, quit. If it makes you crazy, don't do it, really. But if you enjoy doing it, then do it and have some fun. If you can't do it for fun and naturally, snug. Forget it, really. The work is supposed to be enjoyable. All right, any last questions before we go on? <coughs> How did you learn to get your fingers to move fast? Well, I'll tell you something. He's not in the room right now. Maybe it's good he isn't in the room. But I studied really hard with Vince when I was younger, and he's really a great guitar teacher. How to play the guitar. Forget about playing jazz. Forget about playing anything, but how to play the guitar. This is what he taught me. That's the way I, that's the reason why I can move is because I studied the instrument very diligently and very hard with all these exercises and Paganini's and all that crazy stuff that you all go through with him. And it's really hard, but when you come out, you have freedom to do what you want. And you've got to have that kind of guitar freedom to pull off what you want. He gave me the means towards the end. That's the important thing. Because he's the only teacher I ever had. I never had a guitar. After him, there was nobody. I mean, and believe me, I even looked around. I thought maybe I would find somebody, but I never could. I never could find anybody that really, really helped me is the way he did. He really gave me an action. I'd probably be laying bricks with my own man if it wasn't for him. Otherwise, I mean, I wouldn't, this is it, you know? So you have to, you have to work on your instrument. Good question. Right now at the pub, the publisher was here this morning, Aaron Stang. He works for uh, Bellwin Mills, Columbia. I have a chord melody book there now we're, we're thinking about putting out. We're not thinking about, we're, we're getting ready to pull out. And it has tunes like Sophisticated Lady and Lush Life and Emily and Green Dolphin Street. Here's that rainy day. Uh, in solo guitar things, you know, just, just all chords, beautiful chords. Uh, so that should be out hopefully by this year. It's, you know. Is that anything to do with REH or no? It's different than it's different. No, it's different than REH, yeah. But REH merged with them now, by the way. Oh. And you can get my products, Fusion, Intervallic Designs, Creative Jazz Guitar, Video, and uh, what else do I have? Oh, a little small book on jazz. All, all, all the things that I have are in that catalog now. My next project this summer, I, I, I plan just to stay home and finish this, this project, two or two projects. Well, the main one is all of the chords 
All these things that you see me do, I've got them all documented already. I just have to edit them and put them into a, into a book form. So I plan to do that this summer because I really feel it's necessary. I've been waiting and waiting and looking around and thinking that somebody else is going to do it, and I realize it's my task. So, uh, it's not me, it's them. I'm ready. If they can get the work out tomorrow, it's done. You see what I'm saying? So my point is, is to try to get them to go for it. Yeah. You can have like a companion, maybe you send tape, because I find that very helpful. Oh, absolutely. I won't do anything without tape. I won't do, I would even like to do a video. The video and book. I mean, you could see it then. But some people are very good with their eyes, some are good with their ears, some are good when they only have their hands on the instrument. It depends on how you learn. Everybody has a different way of looking at it. So whichever way, however you can get it across, that's the important thing. That's the important thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. I was looking for a copy of your intervallic design design before, and I couldn't find it. Uh, what was the name of the publisher that you? The intervallic design is book should be uh, available through Bellwind Mills. Bellwind Mills slash CPP. They're right here in Florida. You should be able to go right to the factory, which is, is it near your house? No, I don't, I don't know. Where okay, it's anyway, it's in Florida. And right now, all my publications are coming through them. Okay, it was... Yeah, um, I've been listening to your records for years, and I just, I just seen a, a recent uh, discography of about like 10 different records that I've never even heard of that you made. I was wondering if you could give us an address where we get the CD or wherever from that. Several of the country, uh, several, several of the companies have skipped town. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, I don't even know. I think, I don't think there's anything available there. Catch is catch can. If you happen to find them, if you get someone who's got a tape, have a tape them because uh, I can, my mother can't even find them. You know what I'm saying? If, we, if I find a CD, I'll give it to um, Ed Bell. I got two. I have two very interesting uh, uh, CDs that, are just, that have just come out. I've got one that I did with Robin Ford. Can you believe it? Robin Ford and I did a duet together Great with album. Peter Erskine and Gary uh, G Gary Willis playing baby. It's a quartet and it's sensational. It's great. And I also did a, a solo guitar called Italy. I played something for my country. And uh, you can't get them over here, man. They're out of Germany. I keep asking the people, man, like when, you know? Well, we, we can't quite, you know, they, 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 always an excuse. Always an excuse in this business, man. Always some bullshit excuse, you know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why you can't get my stuff. If I ever got with a label, I'd be rich and famous. You know, I might have to, I might have to start dyeing dye my hair green and get a leather outfit. Who knows <laughs> how far we can take this? I might, you know, <laughs> might go very far with all this. Who knows? Take it on the road. Take it on the road. All right. Any last questions before I go into this melodic trip? Okay. Uh, one of the interesting things about playing melodies is how to fill in around the melody. Now, the first thing you have to do is learn the melody. And you should learn the melody in several places. In other words, if I'm playing Days of Wine and Roses, I mean, where else do I, I mean, is this the only place where those intervals exist? those intervals in any place, first of all. So you should spend long periods of time <coughs> on the melody, just learning the melody. The next thing you should do is try to get the sound. Notice how I get a lot of time is notes on, on the same string. string, an adjacent string, you break the sound up. So, yeah. I ask when you do that, though, and you're playing an E flat substance, and you go 
do it on a string. You're taking it out of key position in the way of the tonal center by, by, by keeping it on one string. You come back and you're going to run a, put a run somewhere in there that's going to be out of, you know, if you were playing you know, a lot of things you are, you can play in a flat off of a third position, right? But if you're playing a legato like that, you're taking it out of there, really, you're in a strange place compared to where you're going to play an idea over that particular thing. Well, this question is really good, which brings us to the point that once you learn the melody, and once you start to learning your licks, you should know your licks in all places, so that if you find yourself... Why should you have to go back down here to play an idea? I mean, you should be able to play any place you want. Now, one of the things you want to do is, first of all, notice where your melody is. What's the melody? Okay, now I've got a big hole here, right? So what I do is I start from the bottom with something, and I return to the melody, which is up on top. You see? Now, I've, now I'm playing melody, but I'm outlining something, and I'm getting back to the melody. So whenever possible, get back. up on top and I'm starting from the bottom and I'm going back into the melody again. Always returning to the melody. You have to return to the melody because otherwise if you don't go back to the melody then you're just playing a progression. Well I don't hear wine and roses. You see what I'm saying? If I'm gonna play wine and roses I gotta play wine and roses which means that I've got to get back to the melody all the time. So. <coughs> This is not a rule, but this is something to keep in mind. If the melody is on top, then start the lick from the bottom, or at least from the middle, and go back to it. If the, melodies, if the melody is in the lower register, you start from the top. And I started from the bottom and went into it. all through your instrument, wherever the melody is, while you're working these things out, take into, consider work, into consideration where it is, and then try to get to it from the furthest point. Why? Because it gives you a lot of breath. It gives you a long, it gives you long lines. I'm in favor of playing cadenzas.
melody. A lot of chords, a lot of melodies, a lot of runs. <coughs> now, I don't want to sound too, uh, too discouraging, but give yourself a couple of years. I mean, not unless you've already been doing it for a while and you're kind of used to it. Give yourself some time. These things you don't do overnight. These things are a one slow, one slow chord at a time. If you get hit, just work on parts of the tune. Say, work on the first half of the tune or the first bar or two. Like a lot of times, I would find how many ways, how many ways can I play the note A? because it takes time. It takes a long time. Sometimes it takes too long if you want to know the truth of the matter. I mean, you're waiting for this stuff to kick in. And we're talking about... But everybody has their own way and their own, their own, their own pace. You understand? <coughs> and you have to know what that is. You have to know how you work. And the way you work, then be happy with it. It's called your modus apparatus. It's how a person works. So that's a brief explanation of how melody is played. Any questions about that? <laughs> I'd like to get some people up here and critique their playing. Would anybody be interested in, in coming? I assure you you get much benefits from it. Okay, come on. And get someone to play with you, because I'm going to stand off and, and do some critiquing now. Oh, let me see. Is that a guitarist or a bassist? Whatever. Well, not the guitar for a minute. Because if we get into the bass thing, we're going to start. It'll be too hard. What is he going to do? Play? I'm going to do some...
let's get him a new card and let me let me let me say something about what we're, what we're talking about. This card. Anybody got a card? Who's gonna give up a card? Yeah, I should one of mine. That's one that don't work. No. Good. It really sounded nice. It, it felt good. I, I think we all agreed to it. So let me just preface this in front. What I'm going to say, I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying, well, maybe if we thought of a few other things, too, we could even bring more out of the performance. Let's get that straight in front. So you understand this, James, okay? Uh, I went to a brilliant guy, a, a musicologist, it cost me 70 bucks to talk to this man. It was worth $770, believe me. One thing he told me, uh, I asked him, what happens when I get into a new room and, and you, you can't, you're not comfortable in a new, a new hall, a new, a new room, a new, uh, new environment? He says, well, I says, I don't, it, it, seems, it seems to affect my playing. And he says, yeah? He said, that's because you don't get in tune with the room. I said, well, how do you get in tune with the room? <laughs> you get in tune with the room by setting up the rhythm. You set up the rhythm, which gets the people in rhythm with you. So the first thing I would do is I would, I would try to find out where I wanted to. Like if Mario's going to set it up, Mario, you got to set up that rhythm so that the people, when, when he comes in with my romance, man, they're ready for my romance. You understand? So you get that rhythm happening first. This is where you get the people in tune with the rhythm. Now, when you start, that was beautiful, man. What you played was beautiful. The only thing that I would say is I would, I would keep, I would. You like to sit? <laughs> okay. So the, reason, no, the reason why I say that is because I can't sit when I play because the notes don't come out. They <laughs> I sit, I, I sit on the notes for some reason. You know? the, I, in order to get a full robust thing, you know what I mean? It's like an opera singer. You ever see an opera singer sit down? When, when, does, when does the fat lady ever sit down? She's, you know, she's let it out. So, get in, get in time with the room first. And then, even on your solos from time to time, outline the melody. Like when you go into the second and third chorus, you're still playing my romance. Maybe less of it, but let me hear it, you know? And, and bring the sound out more. And also add more rhythm to the, to the head. I'll demonstrate all this in a minute, but go ahead and try one. A little faster, maybe. A little more. A little slower. I would have thought it was slower. Okay. Can we go to at the end? We go to an F sharp. Last chord. Next line. I think you want to hang on the rhythm, is what I think. I think you want the rhythm to carry along. You see what I'm saying? We'll, we'll snap your. Okay, but whatever. We won't. We won't. We're going to play the same first. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, see, that's enough. Yeah. Now you want to fight yourself now. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hold on. Good. I want to ask you something very honestly. How much of it is how, how much of it is creativity? Are you creating or are you playing what you know? Just trying to do the best I can on that. Oh, you're a little bit nervous. I got, I got yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I, I, it's, I can't talk, man. I got to play shit. There's no way to talk about it. Okay. See, you want everything. You want. You want everything. All right, Mario. Come. Like. Let, let everything carry itself along. Don't force, don't play, let it play you. Watch.
was it too early? Yeah. Well, no, we were maybe we were too far. But I would. This is totally subjective, so it's really hard sometimes to critique. But just let me say my thoughts, okay? I think that you're playing a lot of what you know, as opposed to just creating from the top of your head. Because I hear a lot of runs coming coming through, and I know you worked on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think I think sometimes you just gotta let the rhythm. Like Mario, just just set up the rhythm. Just play rhythm. <coughs> let, let me see, show you what. <coughs> off that solo when you start out playing the next solo that you do after after the after the melody should come out of that you shouldn't be saying okay the melody's out of the way i'm going to just start blowing now no way that that's that melody that you play the second the second chorus the third chorus has got to grow out of the first one that's why it's real important and how you how you approach the first one like let me let me do it again because i want to get this point across Take your time, let the notes make long pairs. Ba ba li ha. Spa la ha ha. And you can hear the rhythm section. <laughs> okay, Mario, go ahead. Intro. <coughs> Same intro, Mario? Jeez. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't expect eight intros in a row. <laughs> Mario, I want you. We're in front of 3,000 people. <laughs> We're at the Miami Dade Auditorium. That'd be easier. Your new girlfriend came to see you. Now you got <laughs> family members are there, man. Yeah, I better give them my best. So, so, and uh, you know, now I mean, you're nervous, but you want to give them the best, the best you got. So, all of a sudden, the leader says, you know, Mario, play the first one by yourself, man. Set me up. So, Mario, play the first one by yourself and set me up. Okay. The whole chorus? Put it up a little bit. Mario, put it up so we can hear you.
too much. I knew you were going to say that. Too much. I know you want to get it all out. Once again, everybody, the greatest lesson I ever had in my life is when I worked with Sonny Stiff. And, and uh, he would get done playing these incredible choruses. And I couldn't wait for him to hit that last note, man, because I was ready to jump in. And the minute he hit the last note, bing, I'm in there playing myself. And after about the third night, he says, hey, man, take your time. He said, can I get my applause first? <laughs> Because I'm jumping right out of him, and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to throw everything at him. I want, I'm, you know, I'm the fastest one up here, man. You know, I'm gonna be so hip and all that shit. Forget it. He straightened me right out. Take your time, man. Make those runs when the time is right. Don't, like they say, man. Don't, don't, don't peep your car too soon. Peep your car. Okay. Play the melody. Play the okay. melody again. Just fill in around the melody. One. All right, turn it up. Yeah, turn it up more. I'm standing right in front of it. Okay, give me some more juice. It's a fender. I'm playing the melody loud enough. So let's take that into consideration. Uh, the thing that the thing that I noticed over and over again is uh, we play too much of what we already know, <coughs> as opposed to letting things unfold right then, right now. You understand? This is the secret of playing: is now. That's why I hate rehearsals, and I hate to hate to do anything in front because you spoil what it is. You can't rehearse it. You understand? You gotta let it happen right now. But there's a couple of uh, couple of guidelines that are real, real easy. The first thing is, Mario, I want you to play all by yourself. And I, I, the thing that I, I'm most concerned about is is the is the point of reference. Where's where's your point of reference with your rhythm in your body? Uh, I'm I'm hearing the two and four. <laughs> Okay, that's what I'm hearing. Because everybody's got to have this. You've got to have this form of reference someplace, in, in somewhere in your body. Like with me, it just happens to overflow into all of this kind of stuff. So, play one all by yourself. Now, but in keep tempo? it in, in tempo. Uh, single note, please. Single note, all by yourself. Okay. 
But start with the melody, not with some fancy runs. Right off, right on the melody. Okay. Don't think, just do it. <laughs>
But things happen. They don't have to be <coughs> fancy. They just have to come in the right place. There wasn't a fancy solo, but there was a lot of notes that were just kind of ringing, and some even some simple chords at the end. And that's, I think, what you <coughs> get a feeling for, as opposed to playing too much, less is more. Okay, let's get some new folks up here. Thank you, guys.
Now, the only thing I would say to George is play it louder. <laughs> Turn it up a little bit. That's the thing, stand up a little bit. Yeah, you can't. You know what? Okay. All the things? Sounds right here. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, you can do this. Yeah, George.
I think this guy is a brilliant player right now. I want you to know that. You know what to do. I don't know. I never met you. I don't know who you're styling for. I don't care. But whatever it is you're doing, please keep doing it because you know what it's all about. Thank you. Let's take a break. about practicing. You could practice 12 hours a day and get absolutely nothing done. I've seen this happen. I, I see a lot of people mindless practice. They'll just, just go all day long and it's just like finger movement night and day, you see. But the greatest practice obviously is when you can concentrate. So say for instance you could only concentrate for 15 minutes at a time. Fine. Don't push it. Take a break. Then come back and concentrate again for maybe 15 minutes. But the idea is if you're not concentrated, don't practice. You're losing something. You're just you're just butterflying around, so to speak. Sit down and accomplish something. As I told you earlier, write out your goals. Write out your daily goal goals, write out your weekly goals, write out your yearly goals, and try to get to what you want. Make it a point to get to it. <coughs> this is the point that I realize is very important. No matter what stage of the game, even now I'm figuring out in my head, well, I've got to do this because this is going to lead me to this, and if I get this, it'll lead me to that. You see what I'm saying? So you've got to make a point to know where you want to go with all this stuff. And if you need help, speak to Vincent or speak to someone who you uh, 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 know or respect or whatever, and get some, go and ask these people who know how to play. Don't be bashful. Say, look, man, how do you do it? Why do you do it? Let them talk to you. It's their duty to talk to you. It's, it's our responsibility to help people. I mean, we're thrown in this position, and this is the way it goes, you see? We can't avoid what we have to do in life, and one of our things is to help as many people as we can. Why? Because I got all the help. Vince gave me the lessons for nothing. I shouldn't tell you that, because now he's charging a good taste, but... <laughs> for peanuts. And give me a quick and take the strings, take this, because he, he saw... He, I, he must have saw something. I, I didn't see it, but he saw it. Anyway, so you practice. Make it a point to practice every day for a while. Get a habit going. Practicing is nothing more than a habit. And don't buy into this thing, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> you know, I mean, how many times do we say, I'm not in the mood? Okay. But if you sit down for five minutes, you'll be in the mood. <coughs> but if you get in the habit of doing every day, you're going to start to find that before you know it, this has become an everyday habit. Anybody got any questions about practicing? Want to ask me something about it? How to practice, what to practice? Yeah. How do you usually start out a, a day of practice? What would you start with first? All right, the question was, what do I start out on a day of practice? Now, George, listen, please. I want you to catch this. How, here's how I practice. When I get up in the morning, I don't practice scales or arpeggios. Why? Well, first of all, I know them. So it's not necessary for me to do them. Maybe it's necessary for you to do them. But what I do is I start playing. I just start randomly playing. And I start to see if I can come up on something that's interesting. <coughs> Once something comes through, it's like catching a fish. Once I got that fish, I yank it in, man, and I start analyzing. I start working on that idea, you see? But through the playing, through the creative playing, I find things to work on. So every day, I'm just sitting around and I'm playing. And because I'm trying to make my practice the same as when I go on stage. What you see me do now, this is what I do at home when I serenade my wife all day long or whatever. This is what you hear me do. I'm just sitting around playing, trying, trying to play. If there's an isolated incident where I need to work on stuff, then I'll do it. But usually, I want my technique and my performance to be the same. Example, if Pablo Picasso gets up in the morning, of course, he wouldn't do that now because he's been dead about 20 years. <laughs> but if he, when he got up in the morning, he would not practice two hours of drawing to go painting. Everything was integrated at that time. His technique and his style were one. He got up and he did his Picasso. That's what happens when you got to get up and play. You got to make what you do the same as what you play. Be careful not to get too mechanical. I mean, if you're running scales all day long, first of all, you run the risk of hurting your hands. Second of all, you run the risk of not being musical. So you've got to include music in everything you practice. No matter what you do, you balance out. If you're practicing a lot of scales, then you have to practice ideas, because you have to have melodic statements. Go and buy my fusion book. I'm going to tell you, it's all laid out. Not because it's mine, but because it's there. 
You understand? The history of jazz is in that book. And by the tape, learn the ideas, isolate the ideas, play them in different positions, play it backwards, make them your own. Learn, learn to run, run them in two fives like we did here. And start putting them in tune. Now you've got your scales and your technique or whatever you got on this side, but you're balancing out with your ideas. You've got to have something to play. You can't go on a gig at night and play scales and arpeggios. You've got to have ideas. So don't neglect it. Work on this stuff. Every day work on, on your, your ability to play better, to play more musical. Look at the tape to see what I said about taking your time. Don't rush things. Of course, no matter what I say, it's not going to help because until you get the experience, then you'll know what I'm talking about. But just learn how to kick back and express yourself. Don't play anything that's not from down here. I mean, let it be musical all the time. I mean, there came a time when I said to myself, am I musical or am I not musical? What am I doing here? Am I a phony or am I just learning a whole bunch of, of runs, just running, or am I really being musical? And when I asked myself that question, I began to take notice of everything I played because I wanted it to be musical. And from time to time, there's a lot of gray areas in my music, and I say, ah, oh, you're bullshitting, man, come on, you know. And I go back and reevaluate it to try to make it as musical as possible. The name of the game is music. Music is natural, everybody. Music is not unnatural. Music is a natural part of our heritage as human beings. I really feel that, because it's universal. Everybody feels it. Everybody likes some kind of music, so it's all part of our souls and you should express it as a natural part of your soul. Your soul, not my soul, not Vince's, not anybody, yours, the way you feel it. You should be working towards your vision, whatever that is, no matter what anybody tells you. People are gonna help you towards your vision, but your vision has gotta be you. When I was a kid, I knew I wanted to play jazz, man. Thank God I had him to help me and a lot of other jazz players along the line. But he was the first one to give me the foundation. Without that, I wasn't going any place. You understand? So he gave me the hands. After I got the hands, man, I could do the rest. Because I never had a teacher since then. The rest has been all done on my own. Listening, asking, thinking, meditating, whatever. That's what you gotta do. You gotta make a commitment, you gotta go for it. It's a lot of hard work. I hate to tell you this, but it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hard work. Sometimes it's too hard. Sometimes you want to just throw it away and say, forget it. Many times, many times I make the confession. I tell my wife, it's in the corner. I'm going to be an artist. I make more money. Sell the paintings, $10,000 a painting, and that's it. Yeah, it goes in the corner five minutes. But then all of a sudden I say, yeah, wait a minute. What's that thing? Be front, be, yeah, okay. I have to pick it up. See what I'm saying? So make up your mind what you want to do. Because let me tell you something. I'm 55 years old. There ain't nothing out here. I've been all over the country, all over the world. I've seen everything there is to see just about. The only thing that makes any sense to me is music. Music is the salvation of the world. If the world is going to be saved, it's going to be saved through beautiful music and beautiful players. Otherwise, because <laughs> everything else is doing this to us, you see. The only relief we get, even if it's rock and roll or whatever it is, the only relief we get is when we hear music. You know why there's so much rock and whatever and it's so heavy, man? Because the vibes are heavy out here. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're just clinging there. Yeah, bring me up. Oh, wow, yeah, great. Let's just get up there, whatever it takes. You know what I'm saying? Some other questions back here. Go ahead. Um, I got two questions. One is, um, could you give some specific examples, some specific recommendations to... Uh, if I want to find my own specific voice, some specific recommendations I can do for maybe melodic ideas. And the second thing is, uh, could you recommend some good uh, players for me to listen to? I'm just getting into jazz now, and I need some. Uh, I, I know I need to listen. Let's take the second one first. All right, start thinking about these players. Write them down for those of you who are, and and you got you've got to listen to these guys, man. When I, all right. <laughs> Let's take the guitar for a minute. 
just the guitar. We won't talk about other instruments, but just take the guitar. I think any good library has got a good record department. And what I would do is I would learn the history of the guitar. I would go back, listen to Django Reinhardt, and listen to Charlie Christian. Because when you listen to those two guys, you hear the history of music. Those are the progenitors. We are the progeny. Fancy words means nothing. <laughs> They're the ones who started, we're the followers. That's what it means. So, <clears throat> Charlie Christian and Django Reinhardt. After a while, you'll start to see where Tal Farlow, Chuck Wayne, and Jimmy Rainey come out of. Get them out of the library. You might get bored. Listen to it anyway, because you're going to need to know what it's all about. Chuck Wayne, Jimmy Rainey, Tal Farlow. Then comes the new guys. West Montgomery, Jim Hall. Then, of course, Joe Pass. Then we start getting into the Pat Martino era. Pat Martino. The new era. The hot shots in the new era are Mick Goodrick. I recommend uh, highly that you listen to Bill Frizzell. Buckboard Billy, I call him. The reason why I call him Buckboard Billy is because sometimes he plays some cowboy runs and he kind of reminds me of a little country stuff. But man, the changes in the conception is just marvelous. Bill Frizzell. The albums to get are these. <laughs> Monk in Motion with Joe Lovano, Paul Motion, and Bill Frizzell. Monk in Motion. I should say that those are Paul's albums. Who's? If people look for those under Bill Frizzell, they won't find them. Oh, you got to look under Paul Motion. Broadway, uh, what's the other one? Broadway Melodies? Broadway, one and two. Uh, Monk. Oh, not Monk. Broadway, Broadway uh, Standards? Just like on Broadway. Something Broadway with Paul Motion. Uh, they play all good tunes. And they also do a Bill Evans album. They do like a bunch of Bill Evans tunes. Beautiful playing, guitar playing. Uh, I would listen to a lot of Schofield. Schofield's great. I mean, you all know that. Uh, Matheny, I would listen to uh, Mike Stern, and there's probably a lot of bunch of hot shots, but stay away from the guys, man, that they're trying to pump up to be great that ain't great. And I'm not going to say him because he's got the tape on, but there, there's a whole bunch of guys, I mean, like the record companies are trying to make some hot shot out of some bullshit guys, man, and it's not happening. I'm sorry. It's just not happening. I mean, don't try to bullshit me, man, because I know what's happening. So you can tell right away. But the guys that I told you are, are authentic. Listen to them. All right. Yes? In that line, I just want to make one comment to you, Joe, because I know how much phrases that you say. Pat Martino said a phrase was great. So he said, teacher, teach you the vehicle to learn. Yeah. You must remember, you are driving the vehicle. Could it be said any better? Words of wisdom from the, from the mouth of Pat Martino. <laughs> Brilliant man. We all know that. <laughs> Now then, uh, also, alongside with all this jazz stuff, you got to listen to classical guitar. Christopher Parkening, Andre Segovia, did I say, I mean, I don't even have to say it. Um, Manuel Baruccio, Spanish guitar, guys like Ray De La Torre, brilliant players, brilliant. One of the most brilliant classical guitar players that ever lived, Ray Del Torre. He had to stop playing because his, he got arthritis in his hands. Couldn't move him. Couldn't move him. I got an album at home. I've been listening to it for over 25 years. I can't believe how great it is. It's just unbelievable. Uh, so listen to a lot of classical guitar because you hear all these movements happening. Go out and buy the first. Uh, a lot of a lot of people have recorded the Bach lute suites. Listen to those movements, man. Get that in your ear. <laughs> violin sonatas and partitas by Bach. Get the music, start listening to it. Um, other areas. Miles Davis, Chet Baker, because of a lot, we're talking melody now. Paul Desmond, Stan Getz. Get anything that Stan Getz ever recorded, especially the last album that he did, it's a duo. Kenny Barron and Stan Getz, they did a duo album, man. Unreal, you never know this guy's dying. 
he died. <laughs> he's playing better. He's playing better before he died than during his whole career. Most melodic shit I ever heard in my life. Beautiful. Excuse my head. <laughs> <laughs> been on the I tell, yeah, been on the street too. <laughs> It can even get worse, believe me. Uh, so those guys, Coltrane, Sonny Rollins. Did, lead us, did I say Charlie Parker? No, no. Charlie Parker with strings. Get Charlie Parker with strings. It's beautiful, man. All the bird things with strings are incredible to hear. Piano, Bill Evans. Keith Jarrett. Herbie Hancock, anything that Keith Jarrett plays, get the solo concerts, get the trio concerts, get the live. I mean, every penny you make, just spend it on music, man. You know what I'm saying? Because this is what's going to make you happy, I think. Um, Herbie Hancock, Keith Jarrett, uh, um, go back and listen to Red Garland and Wet and Kelly, because they have, they have that funk, man. They got that feeling that you need. You understand? They, they're the guys who show the other guys how to do it. Art Tatum. Go get the complete collection of Art Tatum on uh, on Verve. Mm -hmm. I cost you 25 dollars <coughs> Might cost you 100 bucks. So what? You get the history of jazz piano right in Art Tatum. And talk about reharmonization and whatnot. Oh, phew. he's the granddaddy. He's the one who started it all. Classical music. Bella Bartok, Stravinsky. These are the guys that I listen to. I don't know a, lot, a whole lot about it, but the ones I listen to are, are, are I love Bella. I can't get enough of Bella's stuff and, and Stravinsky. If I just listened to everything that they played, man, I'd be the most enlightened guy in the world. <coughs> <coughs> that should get you started. Joe Pass Virtuoso album. It's all Joe Pass's Virtuoso stuff. Um, you said you've been listening to one Ray Delatore album in particular. Ray Delatore. That's all. It's, it's got it's got the picture of uh, he plays. Uh, well, the one I got has got a picture of a rose and a guitar on it of watercolor. I don't even know. I don't think it's in print, man. I don't think you can find it. I think it's a collector's item. You make copies for them. Yeah. I was reading a guitar player. Um, I think it was Bill Frizzell was talking very highly about Julian Bream out. Oh, Julian, yeah, he's a 20th sure. century guitar, and I've been looking all over for it. You can't. Oh, Julian Bream, 20th century guitar. Absolutely phenomenal. I have it. <coughs> I have to make tapes to send them to Vince, and he's got to make tapes for you. you got to have it, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you feel that singing everything that you play is more uh, in tune? Because I think a lot of other players, especially younger players, don't tend to sing what they play. It seems like it affects them melodically. This is the question, everybody, that has driven me crazy for 40 years. Should you be able to sing everything you could play? Wow. That's a hell of a question to fight. Is that what you're asking me? Basically, between younger players and men, uh, they seem like they don't, you know, they mostly like learn scales and learn a lot of uh, ideas and their legs and stuff, you know. They don't seem to, you know, sing in their own way. And, it seems like it comes out better when they sing it or try to sing it as the, while they're playing. So what are you asking? I'm asking you, do you find it easier when you, when you sing, do you find it easier to be more melodic and soulful by singing? You know, so, but okay, I know I can answer this question. Uh, first of all, the thing is that, that you have to know, there is no given time, whenever you look at me, Know that there's something going through my head. You see what I'm saying? Now, whether or not I can sing it is another story. Whether or not I can play it is another story. And quite often, it's usually beyond my reach. But I notice that the more that I sing in my head and the more that I create in my head, the more that I start to create on the outside because the creation comes from the inside first. Then it comes from, then it comes to the front, you see? Now, there's something I want to tell you here that's very, very important here is the spirit always precedes the physical thing. In other words, the music that's running through your head is usually ahead of what your physical body can do. Now, I notice this over and over again, but that doesn't mean that your body can't catch up to the spirit. 
You see what I'm saying? So let your ideas reel out, man. <coughs> sing whatever you think you want to sing, and let it all go, because eventually you start catching up to it. Eventually you catch up to where you where where like I used to sing solos in my head and I and they were incredible. I would tell my wife, I said, boy, what's running through my head is amazing, but I don't know how to play it. <laughs> and she didn't have any question, she didn't have any answer to it. Now I notice that I'm able to sit, I can hear the things in my head, and they're getting I'm getting closer with, with the fingers. So I'm evolving into my spirit, so to speak. Now I can't always <laughs> I can't always play what I hear. I can't always sing what I play. I mean, so I'm going. I'm doing. I'm trying to get the best average, so to speak. I'm trying to get as much out as possible. Now there might be some geniuses out there that tell you, man, man, you gotta, you gotta be able to sing everything you can play. Well, maybe they can, but I can't do that. I can. I mean, I'm. I'm going for the best average. That's all I can say. I'm trying to get as much out as possible. I'm trying to feel as much as possible. I'm trying to let that. I'm not trying to let my muse or my energy or my creativity dictate to me what it is that should happen. You see? And as long as I, the more I depend on it, it's my friend. Always there to help me. Never there, it's never there to hurt you, it's always there to help you. That's why I encourage people to depend on that. Because the more you depend on your own inner self, the better you start to play. But you gotta learn to use it. You understand? <laughs> Start using that muscle, that creative muscle. And there's another thing I want to tell you about. It's called the muse, which is your creative ability, and the editor. Now, usually you'll get a creative impulse, right? And the editor really comes in front and says, no, wait a minute, you can't do that. you got to get that editor out of the way. Kill that editor. And just go straight ahead with your gut feeling. You see what I'm saying? Let whatever it is in your belly... This, has, this is kind of answering your question, your first part of your question, is, what, is how do you find your own identity? You gotta follow an instinct, you understand? It's a delicate thing. You gotta find out where you're going. See where your heart is. Sit down and be quiet sometimes and just examine where you wanna go with all of this. Take a look and, and just, my greatest, my greatest steps sometimes are, are sometimes, I have a room in my house. Real, real quiet. My wife is not allowed in the room. Only when she cleans it. But there is a room in my house that's quiet. And this room has got all my heroes, Rabbi Shankar, John Coltrane, and uh, Stravinsky. It's got all these people. And it's got me there, too. I put my picture among them because I see myself among them. You see what I'm saying? I don't see myself less. I see myself with them. You know? And I go in this room and I meditate a lot about music and I think a lot about music there. And in those moments of meditation, in those mo moments of quietness, the answers come. And now that room is so hip. The reason why I don't allow my wife in there, only my cat can go in there. My cat goes in and sits on my chair. This is going to be the hippest cat when, when this cat evolves. It's going to be unbelievable. I'm telling you. But, but I get in there, and I just sit down sometimes, and ideas start coming, man. It's bombarded with good vibes. You see, it's bombarded with all these things that are ready to come through. And I don't edit. I, don't, I get out of the way, and whatever comes through, comes through. Yeah, man, wow. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's a possibility. I take a look at all these things, and it's really really interesting, fascinating. Be quiet sometimes. Ask your muse. Hey man, which way should I go? Direct me. Somebody give me some help. Ask for help. It'll come. I believe in the metaphysic, metaphysic physics of things. I believe in the powers beyond. Really believe in the powers beyond. I don't care what you call it. You can call it religion. You can call it Voodoo, you can call it Mukumba, you can call it God, you can call it anything you want. I believe it's out there, man. No, I know it's out there. Because I've, I've, I have, I've, had, I've had it help me. More, on so many occasions, some, how do you think I know what I know? Where do you, where do you learn that stuff? Could I, who could I go to learn these things? You know where it came? It came from the other side. Directions from the other side, giving me, giving me, giving me directions all the time. How do you do it? came from the other side. <laughs> Don't label it. 
Just let it happen. Some people call it God. Some people call it providence. Some people call it metaphysics. Some people call it voodoo. I don't care what you call it. Just get in tune with it. Because it's on your side. And it's going to show you your way. If you want to pay the dues, if you want to pay the price, you can do it. <coughs> See this face? This face has been here a long time, man. There's an old face, man. I've been on that path. I mean, I'm getting tired, folks. I don't know how much more I can do this. Okay. Yes, my, my child. Bless it. <laughs> looking at music schools, I was wondering if you might know of any. You know, it seems that some teach music as a trade so that you can make up, make money doing what you're doing as opposed to. Which, which is good, I suppose, but can you recommend any that are really into artistic no. development? I don't recommend schools. No, I don't recommend them. Because I think, first of all, schools are a big ripoff. They charge you a lot of money, man, to go to school. And I think that if you want to, you can get it on your own. Just go get a whole pile of records for a hundred bucks. Get in that room, start copying, start working, go out playing, and you got the same thing much better than if you went to a music school. Man, you could learn music history in a library, five minutes. I teach in colleges, man, and I see what happens. Kids have to spend a lot of time in English, mathematics, music history, this and that. But when's it time for you to start playing? Oh, I don't have time to work on your stuff. What? This is the stuff that you need to work on to get out there and play. Don't tell me you don't have time for it. Oh, I got to learn what Bella Bartok was. Fuck when Bella Bartok was. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Can you play a 251? <laughs> I had an old record player, man, that didn't even have it. I wish it went down to 16 because I missed a lot of those fast runs Bird played. But all I could do was copy the ones that were easy, right? That was my education. Bird, Sonny Rollins, and Miles. Spot, spot, la, ha. Spot, spot, la, ha. Little, 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 little. I mean, that's how I got it. That's music school, man. Believe me, trust me. Yeah. Go ahead, man. But also, you were, uh, I think you were incredibly fortunate to be Judge Freedies at the early stage. Very incredible. Yeah, I had more at that fortunate. So, yeah, in that situation. Yeah. I was born with a star over my head. You know what that means? I had the star over my head and the spoon in my mouth. Everything was handed to me, man. And I thank God for it. All I had to do, they said to me when I came, he says, we're going to give you everything, but you're going to have to work your ass off. And I said, fine, I'll take it. And I did. Good parents, encouraging parents, didn't have to scuffle. Man, I just go ahead and do it. You want to do it? My old man told me, but do it. Same thing with my uncle, but do it. You understand? Three dice, but do it. You understand? I'm born with the man, I'm born with the star over my head. I mean, for whatever the reason, who knows? Lucky. Whatever. Good karma, maybe. Maybe in past lives, I don't even believe in it. Maybe in past lives, I was. I don't know, who knows? Go ahead. Anybody else? You have any kids? Two boys. Uh, how old are you? 19. Oh my God. I remember when my guys were 19. Big pains in the asses. No problem. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> no, they're grown boys. They're about, one's 30, one's 28. Are they into music? No, they make millions of dollars. They're into computers and all that. They're, they're richer than I'll ever think about me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's a, a time where you should start to be thinking about music instead of just practicing? Or right now. Right now. Why, why wait? Do you have any suggestions for us? Or should they be separate or should they always be one? Look, man, don't separate anything. I told you a minute ago, what you play in the bedroom, you got to play in, on, on stage. Whatever you practice at home, you're practicing to play. You understand? Your whole thing is geared towards that stage, towards that light, towards that spotlight. Whatever you do in the room, you got to carry on the stage. You can't practice 14 hours during the day, scales and arpeggio, and then expect to go on the stage and play scales and arpeggios. No. You gotta play the music. I told you about Picasso painting the picture, man. There's no difference. You understand? It's always gotta be one. One. It's always going towards that same goal. No, there's no difference. 
Go ahead. Anybody? Yeah. So how do you, if, if, uh, if you're still learning about scales and modes and, and chords, how do you practice them without getting that, that scale mode arpeggio sound in your playing? How do you practice them and still be musical if you have to combine them? I can show you, I can tell you all how to be melodic geniuses within one year or less. If you just do what I tell you. Okay? The first thing you got to do, and I know this sounds egotistical, but you've got to go out and buy my book. The Fusion book. Because it's got all the licks in it. You understand? It's got the ideas. Once you start gearing your mind towards ideas, you're gearing your mind towards music. Once you start having ideas to play, then you can play through progressions with ideas, not scales and arpeggios. The scales and arpeggios are great for your fingers and for scale harmony, which most people don't even know, by the way. We haven't talked about that yet. The thing about it is, you have to have ideas to play. Whether you copy them off the record, whether you get them out of books, whether somebody teaches them, whatever, you need licks, ideas. Without that, you have no act. You understand? So, yeah, excuse me. Pardon me? They will manipulate ideas. Eventually you start changing them, especially with rhythms and syncopations and different notes. It starts to come out your way. But you've got to have the vocabulary. Look, let me put it this way. Hold on, George. We have a whole, we have a list of words. We memorize all those lists and wor list of words, right? But it means nothing unless, first of all, we can put them into a sentence. After the sentence, we've got to be able to make paragraphs with them. All right, the list is the ideas. Then you've got to take, you've got to take those ideas and put them into a sentence, hang them on a tune or something. Then you've got to be able to play through progressions, which is a paragraph or a bunch of different progressions. You need to do this in order to speak. Without this, you've got no vocabulary. What if I sit up here and I say to you, uh, ochlocracy, antediluvian, pernigrination. Sounds great, man. Joe DiOrio's, man, he knows those words, man, you know. It's all bullshit, you understand? Unless I can put it. I says, the, 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 this crowd is on the point, is at the point of ochlocracy, which means mob rule. They are about ready to take over. That's what ochlocracy means. That lick is anti antediluvian. That lick means it's, it's antediluvian, means it goes back to the diluvian age, which is so far back that it's ancient. So all these things mean nothing unless you can put them into a paragraph. You might have great licks and be able to show off everything, but if you don't put them into a sentence, a paragraph, you got nothing. You've got to work on ideas. Otherwise, what are you playing? What are you playing? And those ideas come out your way. Your way. I don't care what the, how, how man, I've, I've copied just exactly the way Ferd thing is, did things, and I still can't play them the way he did. I can only play them my way. And after a while, you get loose with them, and they start turning them around, and they become yours. Each one of you are individuals. I hope you know that. Each one thinks different, looks different, acts different, and will play different. There's no such thing as two people playing the same way. If you do, forget it. He's an idiot. <laughs> and I know some great players or great imitators, and you know what they are? Great imitators. They, 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 they were afraid to stretch out on their own. They just wanted to take somebody else's act. There's a lot of West imitators out there. Now, I hear uh, young, young guys trying to be just like West, man. It's atrocious. It's atrocious. Because West Bob Comfy was playing off the top of his head, man. You know, West was one of the most creative guys in the world, man. He played rhythms and licks and everything with octaves that were just amazing. You can't imitate anybody, man. You can't imitate it. Even if you try it, don't come out right. Don't worry about it. Okay. Where can you get that book at? Can you speak louder? Uh, Where can you get the fusion yeah. book? Where can you get the fusion book? M-A-E. Get the tape, too. Where's M-A-E? What is on the tape? You've got to have the tape.
speak, otherwise you don't know what the what syllables are. Right. In between 95 and 441. <laughs> a couple of last questions. Come on. Yeah, I have one question. Um, I think a lot of um, young players, um, I'm asking your opinion, a lot of young players seem to play, they seem to skip over, like the Parker and the early ones, and they like, seem to hear them play later. It seems like they they sound, uh, they're not swinging, not, they sound more mechanical. Is, do you feel that it's like Parker is like the jury, and uh, a lot of young the, uh, the older guys are the stuff that really, Let's do a try and take more than say a lot of people want to take a shortcut to try to learn all the new stuff and sound new. What, what do you think about that? Words of wisdom. Those who do not investigate the past are doomed to repeat it. Words of wisdom. If you don't look at the past, man, you're gonna repeat it. All of a sudden, man, I just found some new stuff. You didn't find no new stuff. Go back and, and you're gonna see what has been done. Check it out. You have to you have to investigate. This is an investigative art form. You have to look and see how the principles work. Because they might have figured it all out. And all you have to do is understand it, and then you can take it from there. Understand? Yeah, go back and listen to Bird. That's why I recommend Bird with strings, because it's easier to take. Some of those things that Bird did, man, is very harsh. And very, the rhythm sections are not, you're not used to that kind of stuff. And you know, say, man, I don't like this, it's too heavy. I know it's too heavy. Because the truth is always heavy. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is never light. <laughs> like, what did Christ say? Follow me. I'm not going to get into religion. He said, follow me. How heavy can you be? Two words, follow me. Whew. Here's the guy, he's got his old lady, three kids at home. He's got to work the fields and everything. Christ says, follow me. Man, that's <laughs> strong. I don't know if I could do it. I said, well, look, man, maybe can I come back catch you later on the way back? <laughs> when you pass through here the next time, I got to think this shit over for a minute. <laughs> Told the rich guy to give up all his fame. Give up his money and come out with me. Hey, man, I'm like, wow, I got like two, three million bucks. What am I going to give it away to the poor? Uh-uh. The <laughs> guy says, no way. <laughs> Go ahead. In the back of your uh, fusion book, you list a lot of suggested readings and some stuff, sort of philosophical texts. Have any comments? Look, let me tell you something. Is there anything in particular? Let me, yeah, let me tell you something. First of all, I'm a poor, humble Italian kid that comes from a neighborhood, man. So what do I know? I've got to go to the minds of the, of the century to find out what it's all about. I mean, I've got to go to the Christ, the Krishnamurtis, the Bhagwans, the these. I mean, these guys are much smarter than I'll ever imagine about being. I mean, I've got to see what they, I've got to investigate what they're saying because they're talking about that other side, and that's the side I'm interested in. I told you I don't like this side. <laughs> the other side, man, is where all the good stuff is. And it comes through this way, you see? So I gotta see how they're talking, what they're talking about, because if I don't know what they're talking about, I can't figure it out. So after reading and reading and reading and reading and reading, I finally made up my own religion. It's the Joe DiOrio religion. You can join for ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> now I got it all worked out in my own head, the way I like it, the way it fits for me. And then when things I have to add something new and I happen to put it in. But I don't believe in anything, I believe in me. Yet I believe in everything, because it all works. As long as it works for you, my man, that's the important thing. As long as it don't hurt anybody, it's got to be cool. You know what I mean? When it starts pushing it, I don't tell anybody what to do. Never. I mean, I might give a few orders to my cat from time to time, but that's about the, the size of it. I know you when I teach, I suggest always, maybe this works, maybe this don't work. Try it. I don't say, do it, you know, unless I know for sure that it's going to be the right formula. See, there's three kinds of doctors. There's a doctor, you go to the doctor, there's a doctor who gives you the medicine, sends you home. That's the first doctor. The second doctor is the doctor that calls to see, did you take the medicine? No, I didn't take it. Well, that's okay. You should take it. The third doctor 
calls, did you take the medicine? No. He's over there and he's got the medicine down your throat because he knows it's the right thing. He's the third kind. You better watch him because he'll come over to the house and put the medicine down your throat. You see? I'm the second kind. I, I haven't quite got to that third. I'm working on the third kind because that's the best kind. He makes sure the cure is there. You know what I'm saying? You get cured with the third kind. But uh, we need more third kinds in the world. You know, to put your hand on your throat and say, do it. <coughs> I like to suggest, I like to, like, to, like to nudge and push you in that direction. Because uh, my, my personality kind of gets people left. I do it through the plane, really. Because they think, oh man, if he does that, it must be cool. If he did it that way, man, I like the way he does it. You know, so I got my own little method of madness. You know. So I saw a couple of years ago on TV one night, uh, there was a new political party, this is the truth. It was called, and it came out of a ghetto, I think, in Detroit, where there was a lot of racial problems. And they called the party the John Coltrane Charlie Parker Party. It was I heard, yeah, political. Wow. Wow. And I saw that leader of the party speak, and he said, because through their music, they tell us the right way to live on Earth. Uh, you've been talking about before. Never heard of it since. I was hoping it was going to gain power. <laughs> 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 you know, I think it was the Detroit Chicago. Well, was it really it was the the area that, like, well, I heard in San Francisco they put John Coltrane up as like a like a a, 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 a spiritual leader. They got a cult up in in Frisco. They they go to church and they. And Alice Coltrane, his wife, she didn't want it. She was against it. She said, Train was a human being, man. He was working out his problems like everything else. She didn't want him on that pedestal. She thought it was the wrong way to go. You know, she didn't want him to be revered as, as some special saint. He was musically, we know that, but, you know, they carried it a little too far. Maybe. Well, maybe the association, like you're saying, with God, yeah. the music is the salvation. I think that well, when you take a look at a guy like Coltrane or Bird, I mean, you've got to realize that this is the spirit moving through these people. So if the spirit moves through them, they're going to move through me because the spirit doesn't play favorites, you see? The spirit doesn't say, I love Jesus more than I love you. The spirit says, man, you're right in the same ballpark. Come on, you can do it. But you got to do it. That's the thing about it. We're lazy as human beings, man. We really are. We don't want to work. I told you about getting kicked out of paradise. Work. Big stigma. Forget it. Yeah. Go ahead. Who's next? Well, we're going to close it up soon. It's been really nice to be with you today. I always enjoy coming to Florida. I enjoy the Florida people. I enjoy guitar players. I enjoy talking about music. I enjoy talking about my little uh, ego trips and whatnot. So if there's, like Vince said, if there's about 2% of something you can get out of what anybody says, it's important. I don't know what it is that reached you. And I and I learned a long time ago, I don't think about it anymore. Whatever it is that got to you, if it's even one thing, it may be the big seed that could make the oak tree. like. Down where I live in San Cruz, they cut this tree down, so unfortunate, but it was the biggest tree I ever saw in my life. It filled this room. I swear it was so big. And I thought to myself, this tree came from a little seed. Now you can imagine how powerful if that seed, if that if that's a tree and we're a human being, imagine how powerful we are. You understand? We got a lot of power. A lot of power. Nothing. We're loaded with power. We're unlimited. Tap it. Go for it. Like they say in California, like Stallone, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any last questions before we get out of here? It's been a nice, beautiful, long, happy day. Yes. How'd you meet Vince? Uh, well, there's a lot of ways you could put it, but I believe that I was attracted to karmically. Not only Vince, his cousin. You should have known his cousin. He's the one who taught us. He was happy. He was mystical. He even looked mystical. He was very, very mystical for his time, man. Very mystical man. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was, he had power, man. He had musical power. He didn't know it, unfortunately. But he had, he had musical power. And the people who drew from him always came out big winners. Vince, myself, and whoever. Not many more, believe it. But we happened to see it. For whatever the reason, we saw it and got, oh my God, we got awed by this, by this dude. Very powerful man. He could do things, man, like take parts and, and transpose them. He take he take the alto part and transpose it into the tonic key, or you know he could do amazing things. Read anything. 
a high level human being for his time, 20s and 30s, man, on the guitar. What? Man, mandolin, banjo. I never forget him, as long as I live. Never forgot him. Never want to, never will. And talk to him. Still talk to him. Want to drive driving down the highway? Thanks, Freddy. This one's for you, brother. You're beautiful. That sound, I'll never get it. And I got a great sound, but I'll never get it. It's too deep, man. It was too deep. Was it a gift or was it ready? Yeah, it was a gift, man. It was a gift. Sure was a gift. What else could it be? You can't go to school for it. He never went to school. Something down deep told him how to play, man. And he played. And he was a he was a sad guy too, man. He was sad and lonely. It's too bad because you know why? Because genius always stands alone. And this guy, when when you talk about genius, you find people. Bird was a genius. He stood alone. Coltrane was a genius. He stood alone. Keith Jarrett's a genius. He stands alone. Sure, you got people around you, man. But that makes no difference. You're still over here. Don't you all get tired of that Monday talk every time, man? I, mean, I hope I hope you just hate it. It's so boring. I mean, it's only, it's only, it's only good when, it get, when it's music, man, as far as I'm concerned. The rest, I tolerate. Yeah, okay, yeah, uh-huh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Politics of life, man, I don't even want to think about it. Boring. But we should end on a happy note. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play you one last song before we get going. No, I'm cool. I'm in. I'm on the mountain. Now I'm way up on the mountain. What's the thing you put on your strings? It's called fast frets. It doesn't go on the strings at all. Yeah. What? It doesn't go on the strings. I don't think so. If I told you that I'll make a good loop. You want to make some money? You better get a. <laughs>
Thanks very much. Peace. Thank you. Later. Yeah.